on the budget, we didn't hear a lot of details today. And, uh, you know, we're obviously going to get the governor's budget proposal, I guess, on Monday now. And to me, it does sound like the axe is back as a budget cutting tool. And that is going to be of concern to a lot of Minnesotans that it is not done with an eye to strategic investment or to the future, but it's just done with the idea that it's a, a big axe and that's how you cut budgets. If you take all of his tax proposals and add them up, mm -hmm. it actually grows the deficit by at least hundreds of millions of dollars. We don't know the details yet, but just on the back of a napkin, you can say that. I think there were a couple of missed opportunities in this speech, and we alluded to one already um, with the uh, Ford plant. You know, the St. Paul delegation had a bill in last year, as was mentioned, with Senator Anderson and, and others uh, to fix that issue a year ago. Uh, we've been working hard in the legislature on an angel investment tax credit. Now, the governor could have reached out and acknowledged that the legislature has been working on this and he kind of sold them as his new ideas and that's unfortunate that I think sets the wrong tone. The other missing piece was health care, general assistance medical care. When he vetoed that um, important health care last year he said he did it to send a signal and to try to fix the problem. Uh, we heard nothing about him trying to fix that problem. Now in the Senate and the House we are moving forward. We've been working with his administration but he really did not uh, speak to such an important issue that we, that's been on all of our minds since that veto happened and uh, I, I just wish we would have heard something about that as well because we're moving forward on that and we're trying to get that done so we can tackle the budget issues a little later. Well, I think I th